Right, so this is part two of our simple analysis of a gas turbine engine. Uh, in part one, uh, we had established the ideal temperatures and pressures at the output of the compressor and turbine. And now we're just going to see how they are modified when we take into account the efficiencies of the turbine and the compressor, respectively. Okay, so the isentropic efficiency of a compressor is given by this formula. And that was derived in a previous video. And when I plug the values in, uh, 556 here, the 556 is the ideal, minus T81, which is 288, uh, I will get 603 degrees Kelvin for uh, T2. I will use that 603 degrees Kelvin to work out the work done on the compressor. And that works out to be 31,500 kilojoules. Uh, for T4, uh, the isentropic efficiency of a turbine is given by this uh, equation. And once again, when I plug the values in, uh, I'll get uh, a real output temperature of 656 degrees Kelvin. So using that real value uh, of 656, knowing that the input is 1112, I can work out that the work done in this section of the engine is 45,600 kilojoules. Okay, so as before, the useful work is the work done by the turbine minus the work done by the compressor. Okay, so the compressor is taking 31,500 uh, kilojoules of work. So the turbine, this part of the engine is taking 45,600. So 31,500 of this work is used to drive the compressor. And the difference being 14,100. This is what's going out the back. Uh, it's the kinetic energy which is going to give us our thrust. I can work out the heat energy required to heat the gas from 603 degrees Kelvin to uh, 1112 degrees Kelvin. And quite simply, when I do that, I get uh, 50,000, sorry, 50,900 kilojoules yeah, of, of energy. If the specific, if the heating value, sorry, if the heating value of the fuel is 43,000 and we need 50,900, that means the mass of the fuel required is 1.18 kgs. If I look at the uh, efficiency of the engine, well, we got 14,100 kilojoules of useful work out. We supplied 50,900 kilojoules of fuel, so the overall efficiency is 27.7%. So you may recall in the earlier video, it was 48.8%. Uh, when we had 100% efficiency at the compressor and turbine, it has now dropped significantly just by dropping the efficiencies from 100 to 85%. We will then move on to part 3, um, which will be calculating the trust, and I'll do that in a different video. In part 3 of, uh, of our analysis, we're going to actually calculate the trust uh, produced by this engine. So uh, to do that, first of all, we're going to say that the work done in the compressor must be equal to the work done in the turbine. Okay, So we set the value of the work done in the turbine equal to the work done in the compressor. And in part two, uh, we saw that the work done in the compressor was 31,500 kilojoules. So therefore, um, T4 um, can be calculated because we know what the mass is, we know what CP is, we know what T3 is. And doing all of that, we'll work out T4 to be uh, 797 uh, degrees Kelvin. Okay, we know the efficiency to be 85. <coughs> and plugging in the real T4 at 797, and we know what uh, T3 is, we can work out what the ideal T4 would have been. And that works out to be 741 degrees Kelvin. And <coughs> knowing... Uh, T4 ideal and T3 and I know that the gas pressure coming into the turbine is uh, 1010 uh, kilopascals. Uh, kilo I can get a value for P4 and um, when I do that I work P4 to be out 244.55 kilopascals. Okay so we now want to calculate the pressure here at uh, P5. Um, to do that, then we need to see uh, is 
the nozzle choked. When the nozzle is choked, uh, the Mach number is equal to 1. So um, I'm going to calculate the critical pressure. Um, at Mach 1, the pressure here is the critical pressure. And if the critical pressure is less than atmospheric, which is 101, then it is not choked. And if it's more than 101, then it is choked. So <coughs> I plug the values in and I've worked out that the pressure here is 129 kilopascals. That's the critical pressure. This is greater than 101 kilopascals. Therefore, the nozzle is choked. Uh, at choking, we can calculate the critical temperature using this formula. And again, plugging in the values. Uh, I'll work out the critical temperature is 664 uh, degrees uh, Kelvin. I've used the real T4, okay, so that's what you would use, not, not the ideal, you'd use the real T4. Having determined the critical uh, temperature, I can work out the velocity of the jet, and that's really the Mach number, and the Mach number, uh, or the speed of sound, is the square root of gamma or T5, so gamma is 1.4, R is 287, and I put in T5, which I've just calculated, and it works out at 517 meters per second. Okay, so at this point here, I have um, the velocity, and I have the pressure, and I have the temperature, and from that then I can work out what the uh, the density is. This is really from the universal gas equation. You know, P by V, P by V is equal to MRT. So um, I know the pressure is 129 kilopascals. I know R is 287. I have determined the temperature is 664. So I work out that the density at this point here is 0 0.677. From the continuity equation, the mass flow of air is rho A Vj, where A is the area, Vj is the uh, velocity of the jet. I know the mass was 100 kilograms per second. That was given to us. I've determined the density and I've calculated the velocity jet therefore I can work out the area of the nozzle so I plug those numbers in I get 0.286 meters squared and then we can use this simple equation uh, to calculate the thrust so it's the mass times the change in velocity between the jet and the aircraft uh, in this case we're dealing with static conditions so the engine isn't actually uh, um, well, it is running, but it's not on. It's not an aircraft that is moving forward. Okay, so the velocity aircraft is is, is zero. The velocity jet we established was 517 meters per second. We worked out the, the area of the nozzle is 0.286, and the pressure thrust is the the difference in pressure between uh, this point and atmospheric out here. So we have a high pressure here, low pressure here. That's going to give us a force in this direction. Um, so when I do all of that, uh, my thrust works out to be 59.7 kilonewtons. I can work out the heat required. So I wanted to heat the air from uh, 603 degrees Kelvin to 1112. And when I do that, I get a value of uh, 50871 kilojoules. Knowing uh, the amount of kilojoules required, and I know the heating value of the fuel, I can work out the mass of the fuel, and I can work out specific fuel consumption. So specific fuel consumption is the uh, mass of fuel um, per hour, so how much fuel we burn per hour, divided by the thrust, and it works out to be 0 0.071. Right, that was at uh, ground conditions. I plug the values into uh, an Excel spreadsheet and I worked out what the specific fuel consumption would have been at 1,000 meters, 2,000 meters, 3,000 meters, right up to about 9,000 meters. And you can see that as we go up in altitude, given all every all the other parameters uh, remaining constant, well I've adjusted the mass flow for the altitude and I've kept the same nozzle area, but um, keeping the compressor ra ratio at, as 10 and the turbine inlet temperature to be 1112 degrees Kelvin, you can see 
that the specific fuel consumption increases um, with altitude and that is reflected by we are burning more fuel so as you go up in altitude you're going to burn more fuel um, that uh, concludes uh, the simple analysis of a gas turbine and in the next series of videos I'll do a more in-depth analysis using an actual engine.